Ladies and gentlemen, I do wish to uh, greet you this wonderful beginning of the year. Welcome to uh, today's webinar. Today's webinar is in partnership with InSupply Health and the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to today's webinar, which is in partnership with InSupply Health. And uh, the main topic for today is the family planning in the community pharmacy, with a uh, specialization in DMP ASC. Welcome today. Our speaker for today will be none other than Dr. Michael Mungoma, who is the Dean School of Pharmacy, Mount Kenya University. We begin the webinar at 7.05 or close thereby to uh, as soon as we get to 300 uh, attendees. I do wish uh, to remind you again, uh, we begin the webinar uh, close to 300 attendees or 7.05. Whichever comes first is when we begin our meeting. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, uh, kindly type in on the chat box. Let me know where you are joining us from, from which part of the country you are joining us from. Good uh, evening once again, senior respected members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Good evening once again, uh, members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and all other allied healthcare professionals who are joining us for the, our first uh, webinar of the year. I do wish to welcome you to the first webinar of the year, which is hosted in partnership with InSupply Health, uh, InSupply Health and Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Our webinar for today is on family planning in the community pharmacy with a spray uh, with a specialization in uh, DMPASC. I do wish to acknowledge the presence of uh, the director uh, pharmacy at Kenyatta Hospital, Kenyatta, Kenyatta National Hospital, Dr. Alfred Brishi. I do also wish to recognize the presence of uh, our head of pharmacy and clinical pharmacist at Karatina Hospital, Dr. Kenneth Dirongo, and uh, our senior respected member, Dr. Nadia Bats, the first uh, PSK CEO. Welcome so very much. and. Uh, the chair, Kisumu uh, PSK Nyanza branch, Dr. Irene Olwen Olweni. Welcome, Karibu, so very much uh, to our webinar uh, this wonderful evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I had promised that I will begin at 7.05 or closest thereabouts to 300 attendees for the webinar. So without further much delay, allow me to begin our meeting today. Uh, once again, allow me to uh, say hello and welcome to the first webinar of the year. Uh, in partnership with InSupply Health and the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. And it's not too late, it's on the 12th of January. So allow me to say Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to say, allow me to say Happy New Year. Once again, on the chat box, if you're joining us, let us know from which part of the country you are joining us from. This is our first webinar of the year in partnership with InSupply Health. And the topic today is on family planning in pharmacy with the uh, specialty in DMPASC. Our wonderful speaker for today is none other than Dr. Michael Mungoma, who is also the Dean MKU School of Pharmacy. Team members, allow us to go through some few ground rules. Uh, first and foremost is to thank you for participating in this session. Uh, other than that is all participants are muted during the entire course of this session. Please ask uh, the questions via the Q&A tab at the bottom of your window. Questions shall be addressed by the presenters 
on the QA data. For PSK members, this webinar shall be placed on the PPP portal before uh, close of business, uh, before midnight tonight, it shall be on the PPP portal. So ensure that you subscribe to it and your CPDs will be sent uh, in the near future. For KPA members, uh, happy news is that you should also subscribe to the meeting on the PPP portal. You shall be awarded the CPD points. A point to note that is that this session is being recorded and shall be on PSK's uh, YouTube page uh, in the near, uh, in a uh, week's time. Uh, so for our wonderful PSK members, have you renewed your PSK membership for the year 2023? I do wish to say Jambo Sana, and uh, this is a uh, uh, wish to thank you for the great support that you offered to PSK last year. And now you can renew your membership by just four simple steps. The first step is to log on to the PSK, ac uh, the PSK account uh, via www.psk.or.ke. Uh, you click on uh, the dashboard that is renew up, up there. It's going to it's just going to pop out. An invoice will automatically be genera uh, generated and a push notification will automatically be generated on your phone to make payment. Let me drop for you the, allow me to drop for you the, web, the PSK website. PSK.org stroke membership. There are two of them. So what do I do? Uh, membership. Uh, kindly ensure that you are able to renew your membership uh, via that uh, tab. Our agenda for today, ladies and gentlemen, is on uh, first and foremost a welcoming remarks from PSK, uh, which I uh, will do, and uh, it's supply health. Other than that, we're going to have a pretest after that. And after the pretest, we are going to have uh, the presenter, Dr. Mungoma. Then the post, uh, the posters is going to be done, and uh, after that, we're going to have the Q and A. From there, we'll have the uh, vote of thanks. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow me without further much ado, welcome Dr. Uh, Wajiro Munene to give the opening remarks from In Supply Health. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Mbao. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as Bao has called me, Wanjiro Munene is my name, uh, Senior Advisor, Market Development and Partnership at In Supply Health. We are very privileged to be the first uh, people to host you for the first webinar of the year, and we look forward to a very um, informative and interactive session, thanks to Dr. Mungoma and my colleague Johnson Anyona. So for the ones who don't know, InSupply Health is, um, is, an Insup is an East Africa health advisory firm that has its uh, main office in Nairobi and another office in Tanzania. We are affiliated with John Snow Inc. and our main focus is people-centered and scalable sustainable supply chain solutions, looking both at the public health and currently exploring how we can support also private partnerships. Uh, some of our uh, focus areas are around optimizing data, uh, workforce development specifically for supply chain and continuous performance improvement for public health supply chain uh, systems. Our mission as an organization is to transform lives by co-creating innovative and sustainable solutions in health. And this is our main reason for congregating all of us together today evening for one of our key projects called Market Test, which is looking at how we can improve women's access to convenient and affordable family planning services. And this includes self-injectables, which will be our main focus topic today. Another thing that we are looking at, which is very important as well for all of us here today, is an expanded network of pharmacies who can implement profitable business models while they are offering quality counseling training for family planning products over and above what we currently do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, beyond that, I would like to hand it back to Mbao and I look forward to a very interactive session this evening. Thank you. Asante so very much, Dr. Wanjiro Munene. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, from PSKs and on, on behalf of uh, uh, the PS PSK CEO, who is joining us tonight. So allow me to welcome the PSK CEO to give uh, the welcome remarks uh, on, uh, on behalf of PSK. Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, Dr. Mbao, <clears throat> um, and all the, 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 the people who've signed in. I would like to thank uh, In Supply, um, for the support that they've given us and also looking forward to, to a very cordial relationship. I also look forward to learning. I mean, I that's why we're here today. So thank you so much for coming. I will not take time away from Dr. Mungoma. He is a star in this case. I am just a spoiler here. I'm just saying hi. And uh, I would uh, 
let's all um, hang in there and do the best we can. I can see a lot of people who are logging in now. We're almost at 400 and uh, counting. So thank you so much for coming today. Happy New Year. And this is, a, this is going to be a good year. Good year with great things uh, for us to see and do. So back to you, Dr. Mbao. Go for it. Asante sana, Dr. Uh, Lucas. Karibu sana. Ladies and gentlemen, without further much ado, allow us to go for the uh, first pretest by InSupply. Dr. Johnson Anyona, can you take us through that? Dr. Johnson Anyona? Yes, thank you, Dr. Mbao. Good evening, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, as Dr. Mbao has mentioned, we are going to begin with a brief knowledge check just to assess our level of understanding on uh, the topic for today. That is family planning uh, with a focus on uh, hormonal injectables, specifically DMPASC and, and uh, self-injection. So uh, to facilitate that, I'll take you through uh, Menti quiz. So Dr. Mbao, if you will, kindly allow me to share my screen. And in the meantime, we will be doing that on Menti. So you can go to menti.com on, on whichever web browser you have, whether your phone or desktop or laptop, www.menti.com. And uh, kindly Dr. Mbao share the code. Bao, confirm uh, whether my screen is visible? Yes, well visible, Dr. Ari, confirm. Perfect. So please share the code on uh, the chat. And uh, once you enter, you will see a love button. Just click it so that we can, uh, we can uh, be able to see how many people have been able to join. Again, we are doing a pretest on the topic. The code is www.menti.com. Once you log in, it will ask for a code, which has been pasted on the chat. That is 587-595-38. You can also see it on the, at the top of my screen. Once you are in, you'll see a love button. Just press it so that uh, we can register your attendance. Okay, uh, I'll uh, move to the first question in uh, the next 30 seconds. So please log in quick as you begin this knowledge check on the topic. Okay, please get ready for the first question. So, the first question is, you can be reasonably sure a client is not pregnant if at least one of the following situations apply except you can be reasonably sure a client is not pregnant if at least one of the following situations apply except 
they are within 10 days of the start of the normal menstrual period. They have consistently and correctly used the reliable method of contraception. They have abstained from sex since the start of their last normal menstrual period. They have a negative pregnancy test and have not had unprotected sex in the last three weeks. Okay, I hope we've uh, all gotten a chance to respond to the first question. I will move uh, to the next question. The next question is asking, where can DMPASC be injected? Where can DMPASC be injected? Is it the deltoid or gluteal muscle? Is it intravenously? Is it on the thigh, ab arm, or abdomen fat? Where do we inject DMPASC? Okay, uh, we'll be moving on to the third question. Question number three. DMPASC works in the following ways, except DMPASC works in the following ways, except suppressing ovulation, thickening the cervical mucus, interfering with sperm motility, mobility and function, thinning the endometrium. So this one looks at the mechanism of action, the mode of action of DMPASC. Let's go on to the fourth question. Moving on to the fourth question. After how long should a continuing client get their next injection of DMPASC? After how long should a continuing client get their next injection of DMPASC? Is it one month? three months, six months, or one year? Okay, thank you for participating. 
On to the final question, question number five. On to question number five. So this one uh, is about self-injection. The following are critical steps in DMPASC self-injection, except the following are critical steps in DMPASC self-injection, except shake the uniject for 30 seconds, activate the uniject, gently pinch the skin to create a tent, Squeeze the reservoir slowly for seven seconds. Put back the needle shield into the uniject and discard in a puncture proof container. Which one is not a critical step in self injection? Okay, uh, thank you very much. That was the final question. If you struggled with any of the questions, you are in the right place. Uh, we are hoping that by the end of this webinar, you'll be able to be fluent, confident, and competent in all matters dealing, to, dealing with hormonal injectable contraceptives, and particularly this new method of DMPSC self-injection. I will stop there and hand the program back to Dr. Mbao. Asante sana, Dr. Johnson Anyona, as uh, Dr. Mungoma is, uh, uh, is sharing his screen. Allow me to recognize the presence of our senior respected members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Allow me to recognize the presence of Dr. Kelly Oluoch, uh, the CEO of uh, KMTC. So, uh, I believe Dr. Kelly, are you with us? Are you probably able to say hello? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mbomba. And thank you, colleagues, for joining this session. I'm in, in, uh, indeed very elated to be part of this conversation. And I also want to say that it's quite uh, a privilege to be part of this uh, uh, society and being part of this kind of uh, uh, continuous medical education. I encourage that all of us be uh, lifelong learners and be part of a, a support system that enables all of us to grow as uh, professionals. Thank you so much. I do not want to take a lot of time. Thank you. Asante sana, Dr. Kelly. Uh, for members joining us today, Dr. Kelly is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Kenya Medical uh, uh, KMTC, uh, thank you, Sana Dr. for honoring and being, being with us tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further much ado, allow me to welcome none other than Dr. Michael Mungoma, is the chair of the Education Committee at the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, but also uh, the Dean School of Pharmacy, Mount Kenya University. Dr. Mungoma, Karibu Sana. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mbao. Um, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible, Dr. Ari. Thank you and uh, good evening everybody. Um, welcome to the first webinar uh, organized by the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and supported by InSupply. I want to welcome those that are joining in for the first time. This is uh, what we do as part of continuous professional development uh, at the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. It's empowering pharmacists just to make sure that we are up to date and we're able to address concerns of clients and patients, as well as just meet expectations in terms of competence and um, what we need to do as pharmacists. So this evening, I'm going to talk about 
uh, self-administration of injectable contraception with a focus on DMPA SC. And um, I'll just, uh, I hope my screen moves. So this is just a disclaimer. Uh, uh, part of what we expect to get this evening is to understand a bit of the background of self-care. Uh, appreciate the role of the pharmacist in self-care and provision of DMPA SC. Describe how DMPA SC works and share some of the successes of DMPA and address some of the myths as a pharmacist. Uh, at this point, I also just want to remind Mbau to make sure that he has contacted Anita and uh, Anita will be joining us a little bit later. So self-care, a very important uh, concept that is gaining ground and it's very, very important as healthcare workers, not just pharmacists to remember that this is the ability of persons, families, communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a health worker. So it's basically putting health uh, at a holistic uh, sort of addressing. You know, we need to bring in ourselves into health bring in community, individuals, our clients to ensure that there is collective participation, there is collective responsibility to ensure that there is self-care. So the interventions are evidence-based quality medicines, devices, diagnostics, or digital products that can be provided fully or partially outside of formal health services and can be used with or without the direct supervision of healthcare personnel meaning that we are empowering our clients, we're empowering our patients to take certain responsibilities. Of course, it cannot be 100%, but it just means that uh, they become engaged in their own uh, treatment, in their own decision-making, and there is ownership. So a bit of background when it comes to family planning. Uh, this again is a reminder, about 200 plus million women of reproductive age in developing countries, I know we have been classified as a, as a, we are no longer third world, we are no longer, we are a low middle income country, but it's important that uh, in developing countries who want to avoid pregnancy are not using a modern contraceptive method because of limited choice of methods, limited fear or experience of side effects. And that is where we come in just to make sure that we bring in a bit of confidence and clarity as regards side effects, cultural or religious opposition, which is important. Quality, poor quality of available services. And uh, part of our empowerment and part of this series is to bring people to a point where they can provide quality family planning services. It does not necessarily mean products as such, but services also mean provision of information and uh, having an, a referral system. So user and health worker bias, gender-based barriers. Numbers of trained health workers are also not sufficient to address the need of contraception. So we hope that uh, with our campaign, we'll be able to get more of the pharmaceutical workforce to a point where they can address the needs for contraception in communities where most of the private pharmacies would be located. There are certain populations, including young people, poorer segments of the population, those living in low income areas, which is a significant population, those that are not married, those that are sexually active, uh, or people that uh, live in rural settings. Those are people that may face certain challenges accessing contraception. So with DMPA, this is depomedroxy progesterone acetate. This is effective up to four months, yeah? So let's take note, it's up to four months. However, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, it's usually uh, the very, very specific uh, times in terms of return dates for administration. But for purposes of just noting and pharmacology, they, it is effective up to four months. So these can be delivered in the muscle or just under the skin, the subcutaneous. 
and the hormone is released slowly into the bloodstream. So there's an increasing number of countries worldwide adding DMPA AC, the subcutaneous one that is injected just under the skin to their contraceptive method mix, including self-injection as one option women can choose. So here, the emphasis, we need to underline self-injection, the ability to empower women of reproductive age, those that want to uh, choose contraception to do it themselves. And that is how it looks like, courtesy of... Uh... So why DMPA-SC? So it's been proven to be 99% effective, of course, one would be worried about the 1%. Yes, it's important to communicate effectively and communicate accurately. It's 99% effectively, meaning one out of 100 may not have the contraception that is expected. But 99% is a very reliable effective or efficacy or effectiveness, yeah? At preventing unintended pregnancy when given correctly and on time every three months. So correctly and on time every three months let's remember that uh, contraception does not protect people from hiv and other sexually transmitted infections because that is something that is not uh, properly communicated sometimes it's even omitted when um, uh, providing these services and providing these methods so lower dose of contraceptive hormone than the intramuscular dmpa small and light with a short needle so those are uh, very good attributes it's easy to use included in uh, including by trained pharmacies and women themselves that is self-injection and uh, dmpa ac is stable at room temperature 15 to 30 degrees centigrade making it very very suitable to our settings sub-saharan africa where temperatures can go up where uh, our community pharmacies might have certain challenges with storage. Uh, they made this particular product uh, quite friendly. So why again, there's evidence that um, significantly higher rates of contraceptive continuation with self-administration is present as compared with administration by a health worker. And it's, it's explainable, you know, if, you have been empowered, you're able to do certain things, then you know you own everything. You own the process, you own the understanding, and you're able to uh, do it yourself. WHO recommends that self-administered injectable contraception, that's the DMPA-SC, should be made available as an additional approach yeah, to deliver injectable contraception for individuals of productive mm -hmm. age. So it's important that if it has endorsement from a reputable body like the World Health Organization, then our curiosity as pharmacists should be able to take us further to empower ourselves, one, to stock, two, to be able to uh, provide information and train the client as well as administer the DMPA-SC so that uh, we can actually support this uh, campaign. So how does this work? Individuals who are eligible for injectable contraception can self-administer subcutaneous, just under the skin, yeah? DMPA. And um, that it consists of a flexible reservoir that is pre-filled with a contraception, pushing the fluid through the needle. In a short while, I'm going to just uh, provide a demonstration of what we are uh, I'm saying here, and then prior to self-injecting for the first time, an individual should have access to accurate information, training on DMPA-SD and its administration. Pharmacies can train individuals to self-administer the injectable contraception. I think it's important again just to mention here that uh, even as you are giving this option of um, of the DMPAC, it is important to ensure that your client is not pregnant. I think that came out in one of the questions. And uh, there's a guide there 
uh, for uh, just to uh, verify or uh, to determine whether a client is pregnant or not. And uh, one of the things to consider is that uh, you can be reasonable sure a client is not pregnant if she has had a baby less than six months and is exclusively breastfeeding, has not resumed menses since then. And this they have to report. She has had a baby in the last 21 days. Or uh, she has abstained from sex since the start of her normal menstrual period. Is within five days of the start of the normal period. Is within five days post abortion or post miscarriage. Or has a negative pregnancy test and has not uh, had unprotected sex in the last three weeks and has been consistently and correct, uh, correctly using a reliable method of contraception. So it's important as part of counseling just to ensure that even as this is being given or proposed, that pregnancy has been ruled out. So I'm going to play uh, this video uh, and uh, I'm just going to remain silent for a while so that we can pay attention. So uh, I hope that was uh, clearly audible and uh, informative. Uh, the video is available on YouTube and um, you could easily um, view it again just to understand um, how to administer the DMPAC and importantly the process of counseling and just ensuring that it is as practical as possible for the client, right from handling to administration to disposal of the device. And that any worries or any concerns that the client has have actually been addressed prior to her leaving your facility. So I just want to again take us through um, a study finding because it's important just to appreciate that this is something that has been successfully done in certain countries, uh, namely Senegal, Malawi, and Uganda here, our neighbor. So it's important sometimes to make reference to jurisdictions or people who have successfully done it. So in this particular study, and I'll share the, actually the, 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 the journal itself is down there, 250 women invited to participate in a study. And what is important here is that 90 out of 91 were able to correctly self-administer DMPASC. 90 out of 91 and 87% completed a follow-up so it means that it's quite successful if it is done the right way. Um, and then this other one that talks about client and provider experiences, because it's important just to make sure that uh, you as the provider and the client can share their experiences. So clients and providers reported positive experiences Clients felt that DMPASC self-injection saved them time and money. Yeah, we are thinking about our settings where people have to travel long distances, look for fare, they have to prepare themselves, they have to leave their homes or their houses with other things that may have to be pended for them to come back again and continue but an option of having them to self-inject at home or wherever they feel fit, it could be in the office, at their most convenient time, then can provide a very positive experience and outcome. Providers felt that it reduced their workload and saved them time. And that we found, okay, successfully trained clients to self-inject DMPA, that clients self safely and appropriately stored and disposed of the DMPASC because uh, sometimes we get worried about disposal. 
However, studies show that with adequate proper training, even the disposal is okay. So um, this is the recommendation that is coming up from that study. We recommend that providers plan to train clients for at least 30 minutes, emphasize the activating and injecting steps during training, use up to four practice injections per client trained and give self injectors calendars to help them remember when to inject. Some people might start asking all oh, the calendars and so on and so forth. Uh, my encouragement would be for private sector, especially if you want to provide uh, quality family planning services as part of branding your, your premise. And this is a business model is that you could come up with very simple calendars or very simple uh, job aids. And these are downloadable from the Ministry of Health, but even PSK can provide some of these if need be. And uh, have these as part of whatever you do annually in terms of branding, in terms of providing certain leaflets or brochures and so on to promote uh, your services. So the other study that was there, and, um, and these are recent 2019 cost effectiveness of self-injected DMPASC compared with health worker injected the IM. Yeah. And uh, from the health system, the self-injection is dominant compared to health work administration. And it was more cost effective. So among some of the myths or some of the issues that just need to be communicated to clients is one. So can most women use? Yes, most women and adolescent girls are reproductive age. So again, we're looking at our setting. We know we have concerns about uh, uh, certain policies or legal framework and uh, adults and who is not an adult. However, uh, on the ground or the reality is that girls are becoming more and more or rather are being reported as being more and more sexually active, including boys. So for DMPASC, yes, most women, adolescent girls of reproductive age who want to want a safe, effective, and reversible method can use DMPASC. So can adolescent girls who have, and women who have never had children get or use DMPASC? Yes, they can have safe pregnancies and healthy children even after using the DMPASC. But it's important again to communicate that after stopping, women may not get pregnant immediately because that is a question that uh, comes up a lot and that the effect is just temporary. It varies from person to person. So there's no fixed date, meaning even as you communicate to your client, do not commit uh, a month or two months and so on and so forth because people take those things seriously. A woman can become pregnant as soon as four weeks, but on average, a woman can become pregnant 10 months after their last injection. So again, that information is important for planning and uh, informed choices. Can DMPA cause side effects? Yes, they are like all other hormonal contraceptives. They have potential side effects. Some women may experience them. Some women may not. Some of them may experience one out of several. Some might uh, experience several maybe three or more. So it's important, again, to know the side effects and communicate that during counseling. So can the pharmacists administer? Yes, most health workers can learn how to give DMPA injections. PSK has had a successful run of trainings in the last two years or more. And there are more that are planned. I think that will be communicated soon so that uh, you can be empowered to provide the DMPASC. So can this be uh, stored? So it's, it's a storage issue. So like I said earlier, the DMPA injectable contraception can be stored at room temperature up to 30 degrees uh, centigrade until the expiration date. So that is a plus. 
Can women from low income settings successfully uh, self-inject? And here, uh, low income uh, sometimes is a, is a term that is used to describe uh, people discriminately, but however, scientifically, it's accepted. Uh, there is usually an assumption that there is low education, but uh, among people living in low-income settings. However, research demonstrates that most women living in rural areas with low literacy can be trained to self-inject DMPASC, especially using image-based instructions for training and support. So this can be done anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether they're coming from middle income, low income, high income, it applies across. So why should family planning programs consider the option of DMPASC again? This puts power of contraception in women's hands. They're able to be part of the decision-making, part of planning. Remember again, as a reminder, family planning is not just uh, about um, numbers. It's about spacing. It is an economic issue. It is an economic issue. Evidence shows that it enables women to use injectable contraception longer who wish to do so. Women who have more control over their fertility have greater opportunities for education, training, and employment. Very, very important. So those are just some of the references that I used to prepare this presentation. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Back to you, Bao. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Mungoma. Probably uh, yes. the guidance on uh, Anita coming in to probably thank you. have. Uh... Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so in our midst, we have one of the pharmacies that was trained. Her name is Dr. Anita Acheng. And um, at this point, I just want to invite her to share her experience and share a little bit about DMPASC experience at her uh, workplace. Uh, and I think this is this is very important because we need to see some of the results of our work so that it's not just um, one way. Dr. Anita, welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity. So um, in regards to the training that we had, um, I felt like it was a really good eye opener, especially because women need um, effective and easy contraceptive methods to use. As you can see, the DMPSC is portable, so they can carry it anywhere. And even if they are traveling, they don't have to um, worry about their contraceptive. What I've noticed from the place I've been working, people who have been using uh, something like the DMP, the DMP AIM, um, they've not been in a position, especially when they travel, they've not been in a position to get it um, conveniently. So in an event that the patient was given the DMPSC, they wouldn't have to worry. Whatever the situation or the circumstance they would be in, they would be able to um, administer the DMPSC to themselves. Also, it's very cost effective. And as, as um, the video also described, um, the client would need approximately three or four injections in a year, which is quite good. Um, yeah, so the training I feel opened up my mind also and open um, the client's um, perspective to hormonal contraceptive because it's easier for them to um, administer, um, administer it for themselves, yes. I'd also yes, like sir. to encourage, sorry, I'd also like Go to on. encourage other pharmacies who are um, considering this um, that you can, Actually, most people out here are looking for convenient uh, methods of contraceptive. The pill is not as convenient for many people because they may tend to forget. And it's not also advisable, as you know, to keep on taking the emergency contraceptive. So this is convenient for most clients. And even the people I've interacted with prefer this because of the convenience. And I'd encourage all of you to start it up in your pharmacies. Thank you.
uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nita, for sharing your experience and uh, being one of the FP champions or ambassadors. And we hope that um, others will follow suit. Those that have already been trained can also be motivated, uh, one, to continue providing quality family planning services, especially and including DMPA SC, and share. Yeah, it's important that we're able to share because once we start sharing, then uh, we create confidence, we create an, an environment where uh, people can actually refer us as uh, providers of uh, family planning services. I want to set it back to Mbau to guide the next part of this session. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Michael Mungoma. So right now, I'll ask uh, Dr. Johnson and Yona to take us through the uh, poll, uh, the post-test poll. So that will go to the Q&A, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Mbao. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mungoma, for that excellent presentation. Very, very insightful. Uh, and also to Dr. Anita for sharing her experience uh, implementing the knowledge that was imparted uh, on her. So we had begun with a knowledge check and we've gotten the information around DMPSC, hormonal injectables and uh, self-injection. So now is an opportunity to do a knowledge check again uh, to see whether there has been any learning so once more, we'll do it on menti, menti.com. So please go back to your browser URL on your phone, on laptop, uh, menti.com. And uh, you'll be able to get a window that asks for the code. So once you're in, you should be able to see what uh, I'm sharing on the screen. And the code, please Mbao, if you can reshare it on the chat. The code is 587-595-38. 587-595-38. It's also uh, on display at the top of my screen. Please log in. You will see a love button. Press it so that we can register your attendance to the post test. Thank you, Bao, for sharing. The code is posted on the chat, is also on display on the screen. Once you are logged in, please. Press the love button. Okay, uh, we can go over the questions. Uh, starting with the first question. So you can be reasonably sure that a client is not pregnant if at least one of the following situations apply, except
Okay, uh, let's have a look at what the correct answer is. So the correct answer there is, is within 10 days of the start of a normal menstrual period. As Dr. Mungoma explained in his presentation, the ideal should be not more than five days after the start of normal menstrual period. So after beyond day five, the woman enters the unsafe days and there is definitely a high risk of getting pregnant. Okay, let's move to the next question. So this one is asking on the site of administration of DMPSC, where can DMPSC be injected? It was very well demonstrated on the video, if you watched it. Okay, so let's have a look at the correct answer. So as we saw in the video, uh, DMPSC is administered subcutaneously. And from the word subcutaneous, you know you're targeting the fat. So the site can be either the upper thigh, the outer arm, or the abdomen subcutaneously. So meaning uh, under the skin. Okay. Let's go to the third question. DMPASC works in the following ways, except. Ah. Okay, so how does DMPSC work? So let's have a look at the correct answer. So DMPSC works either by suppressing ovulation, thickening the cervical mucus, or thinning the endometrium. It does not work by interfering with sperm mobility and function. That is how copper IUD works. So that is the one that is incorrect that you should have selected. Okay, let's go to the next question. After how long should a continuing client get their next injection of DMPASC? Excellent, that is now easy. And the correct answer is after three months, after every three months. Okay, the final question. Uh, the steps of self-injection as were demonstrated in the video, which one is not one of the steps?
Okay. It seems this one still had a challenge. Uh, Dr. Mungoma, I would, uh, once I show the answer, I would also like for you to speak to it so that there is clarity uh, looking at these results. So the correct answer is putting back the needle shield into the uniject. As you saw in the video, once you've opened and used the, the uniject device, you're supposed to discard it as it is. You're not supposed to recap it to avoid any needle prick, uh, uh, needle prick injury. Dr. Mungoma, anything to add to emphasize on the steps of self-injection? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Anyona. I think uh, what is important is to be able to go through the steps individually. I know that uh, training requires a little bit of uh, just focus, eh? being able to, to read or listen or watch. So the, the needle prick is something that is very critical. And uh, that is something as well as disposal eh, of the needles at the very end, and it's usually a common question. But just to say importantly is to have the skill to do this thing. So we're going to share this video. We're going to share other written materials because this is available for people just to go through and be able to have that ability. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you all. I think that was the last question. And looking at uh, my own analysis of uh, how the pre-test versus the post-test has fared, I think uh, a lot more people got the correct answer in the post-test. So definitely evidence that learning has happened. And so just to thank Dr. Mungoma for once more the excellent session. Back to you, Dr. Mbao to guide the rest of the program. Uh, Santa, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for holding on tight to uh, the wonderful program. Uh, so just before we go to the Q&A section, just before we go to the Q&A session, allow me to uh, probably share one wonderful thing just before we go to the Q&A session. Uh, first and foremost, I do wish to welcome you to the, uh, I do wish to welcome you to the 43rd annual PSK conference, which shall be taking place on the 22nd and the 27th of May at Diani Reef Hotel in Diani. Our theme this year is positioning pharmacists in a dynamic healthcare environment. Our sub-themes include regulation, and registration and policy, medication therapy management, and other cognitive pharmaceutical care services, local pharmaceutical manufacturing, financial management in pharmacy, advances in health technology. So the call for abstract is already out. So kindly ensure that uh, you look at, uh, you check out on our social media pages uh, to be able to have the call for abstract on that. So without further much ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to go directly to the Q&A. The first one is by my colleague, Pale Benson Silla. He's asking if the CPD points are only for PSK and KPA members. The CPD points should be for PSK and KPA members. In the course of the year, we will be able to update and have, a, have CPD points. Uh, issue to all other members. Uh, Liz Mati, Dr. Johnson Anyona would like to answer your question. Dr. Johnson Anyona, are you able to respond to that? Sorry, Mbao. There's a question by Dr. Liz uh, Mati. You had raised your, your mic. Oh, yes. Mati. Okay. Yes. Yeah, regarding the cancers, I was trying to type in, but yeah, I can, I can just answer. So uh, this question is about whether DMPSC has impact on cancers. So as you, as was described, the, the only difference with this new uh, subcutaneous is the method of the mode of administration. So it is still DMPA, the depot, the drug is still the same. And as you know, DMPA has been with us for many, many years and there haven't been any reported cases of safety or uh, concerns uh, about it uh, causing uh, cancer. In fact, as a matter of fact, uh, particularly for endometrial ca cancer, uh, some studies have shown that it has uh, the protective ability on endometrial cancer. So there is no uh, overall risk uh, for DMPSC on ca causing cancer. Wonderful, Dr. Ari. So probably, Dr. Mungoma, I will ask you to join in to 
probably be able to respond a question to the clinical pharmacist, our wonderful clinical pharmacist at Karatina Hospital, none other than Dr. Kennedy Rongo. Dr. Mungoma, are you able to respond to his question? I'm here. What is the question? Uh, my screen is showing something else, uh, annual conference. Okay. Well, on the Q&A tab, he, he is asking, other healthcare workers like nurses in MCH are averse to DMPA because of its high dose at 750 uh, milligrams, much higher than implants which go for longer durations, three to five years. Their experience is that fertility after DMPA actually resumes after even 10 years. What would be your comment, especially about that high dose of DMPA? Uh, maybe just to again clarify, I, I don't know whether it's a typo or what, but uh, the, the the dosage for DMPA SC is one or four milligrams per zero point six five mL, uh, as compared to the one fifty milligrams that is in the intramuscular, uh, the IM. Yeah, and um, I think the other thing that is coming out from that question or inquiry is why these ones go longer and so on and so forth. I think it's just an issue of pharmaceutics, what we studied, formulation, different formulation and how these uh, particular active ingredients are secreted into the bloodstream. So I think I, I hope I've answered that question. Asante Daktari, another question for you probably from Dr. Godfrey Mutune. What's the DMPA content? in the subcutaneous injection. Are there any studies evaluating the safety among breast cancer survivors or its risk for incident breast cancers? Also, what is the cost of one injection? So uh, I think I've answered the, the dosage bit. Um, so when it comes to cancer and risk, uh, the use of DMPA does not affect breast cancer risk. Um, you know, but uh, studies, are, are not very conclusive. It says there's, there's an association between DMPA use and breast cancer risk appears similar to that observed with oral contraceptives. So therefore there is nothing unique about DMPA as compared to other contraceptives as regards the risk that we need to be very keen on. Uh, regarding those that have undergone uh, treatment or procedures for breast cancer and they're still uh, active sexually. Ideally, um, you know, condoms, female condoms, diaphragms or the use of coil is advised. However, uh, uh, this will answer maybe other questions here. We also have this tool that is known as the MEC wheel which is essentially a, a tool that is able to guide us through evaluating clients for an ideal method, meaning even if a client has gone through uh, breast cancer treatment, they still need to be screened. Are they having any other issues? Is their blood pressure up? Are they on other medications and so on and so forth for them to determine whether DMPA would be ideal for that situation at the time. The cost of one injection, I think, uh, I don't know whether uh, Dr. Nyona would be best placed to address that. Uh, I, I, PSK does not really uh, do pricing. Mbao? <laughs> Dr. Johnson, are you able to respond? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am. So the supply for DMPS is through DKT. I believe DKT also hosted a webinar earlier on. And uh, the wholesale price is about 125 shillings per unit. And this follows uh, the channel to ultimately end up in the pharmacies, who now uh, uh, sell it according to the service they've offered, because you know there are some who offer just uh, the product itself, but there are some who over, offer it comprehensively, including uh, the counseling. So I don't know whether my colleague Genuine is able to also shed light on uh, what the retail price is uh, based on the pharmacies that they've uh, been visiting. 
but the purchase price is around at, at 125 shillings at the wholesale level. Um, uh, th thanks, thanks, Johnson. To to add a little more information on the on the retail price from um, the pharmacies that we have interacted with, most of them are arranging their price between uh, 250 to 300 bob. But this this of course varies depending on uh, profit margins. But it's 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 more likely that clients. Um, are more comfortable around that price range because it it it, it is similar to almost similar to what uh, pharmacies are already charging for the IM injection. Thank you. Back to you. Wow. Asante so very much. Asante so very much on that, uh, Dr. Genuine. Uh, so probably to, as we wind up the Q and A section, I see a question by Dr. Muduri Kome. I think I believe Genuine will be best uh, to support this. Uh, hello, team, and thank you for the educative uh, presentation. Is the formulation to be given to public facilities? Uh, Asante, that very much, Dr. Kome. Jenny, are you able to respond to this question by the chair, PSK Meru branch? Pardon, can you, can you say that again? Hello, team, and thank you for the educative presentation. Is the formulation to be given in public? Um, to the best of my knowledge, um, yes, it's... Uh, it's just that the the government is uh, hasn't uh, rolled it out yet to to the whole country. However, the they have conducted a, a pilot phase in in some of the counties, so it it's still an ongoing process. But yes, it with time it will be available in public facilities as well. Asante so very much, Dr. Genuine. Another question from Brian Ogenya. DMP and DMPSC has been associated with irreversible reduction in bone density, bone mineral density. Developed countries do not advocate for its use beyond two years. What are the current guidelines, Kenyan guidelines? What is the current practice among us as professionals knowing this? Dr. Mungoma, are you able to respond to this? Uh, we, we may need a little bit of more background to that claim uh, because this is a product that uh, has... Um, been shown to have quite a good of a good safety profile and in addition to that if you have a client and that's why um, counseling becomes very very important eh? if you have a client going for uh, using dmpasc for two years eh? i think part of counseling when they come back again for a follow-up is to provide information of other methods if they are planning to um, have contraception for a longer period of time, yeah? Because um, there are also other methods that are, that are available that could be like implants that can stay for three years and so on and so forth, that can increase compliance, improve, um, uh, reduce the, the needle pricks and so on and so forth. So, uh, I, I think it's not a matter of uh, uh, Kenyan guidelines and so uh, it, it's, it's a matter of how you as the healthcare provider and the clients interact to provide, to provide the best choices, to provide good guidance so that they make informed decisions um, based on their own settings and based on uh, what their, their circumstances. Thank you. Sergeant Dr. Mungoma, a question by a supply chain specialist, Dr. Frederick Denji. What is the status of availability that has been responded to? Uh, Santa Sana Brian Okenya has been able to share the link uh, for that. So probably the last question for tonight, do we have different needle sizes for people of varying weights to make sure the needle is within the subcutaneous and not intramural? Are you able to respond on that? Sorry, we didn't get the last part. What uh, what did you ask and who is being asked? Uh, this is Peter Kamau asking a question. Do we have different needle sizes for people of varying weights to make sure the needle is within subcutaneous and not intramuscular? Uh, so just to say again, the DMPASC is a product that that is complete in itself. Yeah, so it's it's a single-use product. 
it doesn't come with varying needle sizes and so on. It's just one size uh, in terms of the needle, in terms of the quantity and in terms of the shape and so on. So unlike other, uh, maybe the IM and uh, this does not vary. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Mungoma, for the wonderful uh, lesson you've taken us, us through today. So ladies and gentlemen, without further much ado, we are coming towards the end. And just before we finish our meeting for today, allow me to probably invite you to the National Cancer Summit, which shall be happening at Safari Park Hotel uh, on the 2nd to the 4th of, December, of February, the year of our launch 2023. Uh, registration link will be shared soon uh, to all our uh, to our various platforms. Thank you so very much for listening and attending tonight and the first inaugural webinar for today. I am much grateful for you uh, for your time. Uh, so probably let us uh, let us get to uh, to hear a closing remarks probably from Dr. Johnson Anyona. Uh, Dr. Johnson Anyona, are you able to give us the closing remarks? Yeah. Uh, so big thank you to PSK for hosting this timely and insightful webinar. Uh, on behalf of InSupply, as uh, my colleagues mentioned earlier, we are in close partnership with the both associations, including uh, the one for Farmtex KPA to disseminate uh, and raise awareness uh, on family planning in the retail pharmacy space. So our time is now to take up this space and offer quality, comprehensive uh, family planning uh, services. So thank you, and uh, I wish you all a lovely evening. Thank you so very much, Dr. Johnson Anyona. We have come to the close of our meeting today. We shall be continuing with this series of webinars uh, in the near future, and we shall be continuing with our Tuesdays and Thursdays webinars coming uh, from the coming week. So watch out and see what webinars we are having uh, to be able to ensure that we are uh, globally of, uh, of, of global competence in matters pharmaceuticals and other matters in healthcare. Thank you so very much for listening to me. I will say that we have come to the close of our meeting today and do wish you a great evening and a fruitful new year ahead. Have a good night and God bless you. Thank you. Bye.